Hey, what's up guys? Hosh I'm going to talk to you today about my CB radio setup. And uh, I actually wanted to add a PA system, which is this little horn here. It's actually a little too small, but I'm going to show you what it is to set it up, and then I may change it into something a little bit louder later. But the same rules apply, basically. Uh, wire up a CB, and you're going to connect it to this. If your CB supports it, it's pretty easy to find. I'll post the link to a CB radio that I'm using by Cobra. Uh, you can check it out, decide if you want to use it, go from there. I like it because it's small, but hey, your mileage will vary. So the first thing, the uh, most important thing that everybody says about radios just in general is it's all about the antenna. So if you can spend more money uh, to get a better antenna, you probably should. So the antenna I use is the 4-foot fire stick. And I'll also post the link so you can check it out. But basically it's a real firm antenna, very little flexibility to it. And I've added a fire stick spring and I'm using the fire stick mount. This is an adjustable mount. Uh, it has 180 degree rotation depending on your configuration. I have it behind the tail light. I had to put a small bend. I actually need to go in and add another bend. But basically for this, it's very simple. You just drill a pilot hole or, or get a center punch, punch a hole, drill into the body behind the tail light, mount it securely. And I have the 18 foot uh, coax cable here. You can go with something that fit, fits your length, but 18 foot is generally what you want to be. It doesn't screw up uh, the distance between the radio, the antenna, and then the ground. Ground's really, really important with CB radios, uh, particularly when you have a unground antenna like this one is. So this is a 2012 Nissan Xterra, and what I did was I actually ran from the right side rear tail light up into the headliner and then along the seals of the passenger door and dropped it down to, to the A-frame here um, on the, dry, uh, the passenger side. Then I fished the cable underneath the carpeting and behind and then up and under the carpeting and then through the center console to the radio. Very important thing to remember with CBs is that you don't want to coil and stow cable. You want to make the cable lay out in non-coiled rings. That helps uh, prevent grounding issues and cable issues. So I mounted the radio up against the uh, shifter for the automatic transmission. It's a very small radio. You can see, I'll put my hand up against it. It's very small. The coax cable comes out from underneath the center console and the power from the back feeds into the center console, which I then route underneath the dashboard. It's, it's really easy in the exterior to just loosen some bolts and get access to a whole center panel and all through that stuff to just snake things through. If I can make a recommendation, if you have a set of uh, fish tape, for wiring, I highly recommend you use it. It made the whole thing a lot easier for snaking cable. And here's what it looks like from the passenger side. Got the automatic shifter here. Here is the radio, and I've got a little space here for the, the microphone that just came with it. But anyway, it fits perfectly for me. My legs aren't huge, so that's plenty of space. It doesn't obstruct my, my driving at all. But it gives me hand access very easily. The controls are really easy to operate. Um, that is the Cobra 19 Ultra 3. Again, the link will be in the description, but what I wanted to show you is um, I snaked the line up under here, under the dashboard. So you can see right here, I, I pulled it out. It actually sticks underneath here, but this is the power line for the radio. I just folded it up underneath this little lip, and then that pretty much is out of the way. Uh, you can do a better job with two-sided tape to secure it. But what I wanted to show you was uh, the solution that I came up for powering it. Everybody has a different way of doing it, but a lot of it's kind of janky. So here's the fuse box for the Xterra. At least the um, there's another whole set of fuses in the uh, engine compartment. But what I did was I bought this uh, add-on. And let me unfeed it and show you what it looks like. So here's the power line from the, the radio. And I just used a coupler into this uh, fuse add-on. So what it does, plugs into your regular fuse line for uh, the radio in this case. I'm using the radio line. And it, you take the fuse from the radio or the portion that was in there, plug it into this top portion, and then you feed a second fuse into the top and that's the one that runs to um, the other line out here, this line on the side, out. So what that does is it allows you to add the cable in a lot more securely. And it's not so janky and you're still separated by a fuse. The radio still has its own fuse. You're not jamming the cable into the <laughs> into the actual lead, which is what a lot of radios actually recommend. The radio, this radio itself, the instructions tell you to just tap into the uh, into the fuse and, and do that. So that was uh, kind of 
it, it sounded janky and it didn't feel right. And I know a lot of other guys, they go to the battery, but I don't like that idea either. So all you do is uh, feed this back around. It comes with a, uh, a crimper, a crimper coupler, but uh, I didn't like the, the crimp that it made. So, and then just plug it back in. And that's it, you'll see it. So here it is attached. Uh, this is plugged directly into the fuse box. The two auxiliary or extra fuses are off to the side. If you ever have to change this out on the road, you kind of unclip it, replace the fuses, plug it back in, and you're good to go. At that point, the radio only turn on or receive power when the car is on. So the advantage of going into the fuse box with that little secondary coupler there is that when you turn on the accessories, the radio will turn on which is nice because then you don't have to worry about draining your battery. Not much activity right now. The downside, however, though, is you're actually removing power to the radio itself. So if you wanted to maintain the last channel you were on or say um, where you're at, everybody rag chews on some channel, 19, 20, whatever, uh, then you'll lose that and you'll have to manually key to it every time. But hey, some people that's going to be an advantage. If it's not for you, then run it into the battery compartment and run it into the battery directly. So when it comes to the public announcement system or PA, you're going to have uh, one problem for newer cars is you're going to have a hard time finding a place to mount it. And the other problem you're going to have, which kind of everybody shares, is that you're going to have a hard time finding a place to feed the cable through um, the firewall and into an area that you can actually get access. So I found a place to route the cable, here's the end of the cable, uh, through for the PA, but before I do that I want to mount the unit so that I know I've got uh, the routing all sorted out. And it looks like I've got a clear shot to where I've fished some tape through. And I'll use the fish tape again to solve my problems when it comes to, comes to sorting it out. I'm going to use some zip ties. Uh, I found where the horns are, they're right here. The PA system is a, um, oh it's perfect, great. So anyway, the PA system is oftentimes pretty water resistant, weather resistant, but still you don't want to put it in a forward or a vertical fashion because all that's going to do is be a bowl and collect water and you don't want to have to necessarily deal with that. So um, good things to do is face them towards the front. If you can do that, that's the best, you know, over somewhere inside um, where the grill is so that the, the noise is as loud as possible or face it down towards the ground and then you'll get hopefully enough uh, reverberation there that people will be able to hear it and whatever. So I'm going to do that and if it's not good enough we'll, we'll change it later but for now it's all right. Um, I have an incredibly small PA here so some of you will not share in my fortune but uh, with that said they're available different sizes all that good stuff. But one drawback of going with a smaller one is then you don't have the verbose sound that a lot of you guys want. That I want, right? Not obstructing anything. But I've got something else I can run through, so I might as well do it just for added rigidity. Tight quarters, man. Car's not the same anymore. <laughs> this should be a blast of an old Bronco or something like that. Anyway, all right, so I got him fed through. All right, and take your favorite dykes. Snip the ends. Try not to leave tag ends in place. Shows shoddy craftsmanship. That's mounted real nice. Okay, so then um, it's an engine, right? So keep the hot stuff away from the, the weak stuff and just route this around. You don't need to tape it in place unless you absolutely want to because once you get it through to the uh, user compartment, you're going to pull all the slack up. So I'm going around my air intake underneath the snorkel that's in the, uh, the wheel well. I've got my fish tape end right here. And here's my plug for the PA. I'm going to mate the two together as best as possible and tape them up real good. And you want to do this in a way that um, is smooth and seamless. Because I don't have a lot of room underneath that grommet and uh, it's not going to be fun trying to yank it through. So don't, don't overuse tape where you absolutely don't have to, but at the same time you need to make it real tight because it needs to pass through that grommet. It's best if you can build a little taper at the end that's going back through the grommet in the direction it came. Make it real tight. Cannot ex 
explain that enough. And then tear it. All right. Now I just hope for the best. Um, here's the grommet. I'm gonna reuse it. I'm gonna cut this out and feed the line through it and put it back in place. That way, I don't lose any of the whatever it was doing. <laughs> keeping bugs out, keeping the weather out, keeping the heat out, all of the above, right? Oh yeah, make sure you take up your slack too. You want the slack inside, you don't want it in the engine compartment, you want that a nice tight line, you don't have to worry about that. That's what you want. So you don't have to worry about uh, stowing, bundling and stowing with the PA. You can go ahead and do that. It doesn't affect your, your radio at all. It won't affect your reception, won't affect your broadcast etc etc so here's the line excellent done with the fish tape fish tape man got me out of so many troubles okay and here's the final setup I ran it up and around the body panel or um, underneath where the feet are up and above and then down here through this little access panel you could snake it up under here if you wanted to if you wanted to go the extra mile just to make it look as good as possible that's cool like that. I <laughs> just did it. Anyway, plugs in the back end, so let's go uh let's go check it out, show you what it sounds like. Here's what it sounds like. Hello? Testing, testing. Here's what it sounds like, uh just normal volume, regular everything. Uh here's what it sounds like with the engine on. Thanks a lot, guys.